thank you for inviting me to this uh, interesting conference. Um, I uh, didn't have the chance to uh, review my presentation last night because uh, I had problems with the plug, but uh, we'll get along. I'll um, explain a little bit about the context in the Netherlands. First, I will introduce myself later. I'll explain about the context in the Netherlands, and then I will uh, 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 walk you through a couple of uh, different outlets and how local food is being represented in these outlets in the Netherlands. So uh, I am a researcher at uh, the Leij Institute. It's actually based in The Hague and not in Wageningen, but that's not, not a problem. Also at the research, at the Rural Sociology Group. Uh, this is a project that we've, I've been busy with last year. It's a Green Deal, very much similar to the Green Deals in the UK. And this is about drawing attention from informal investors in local food systems. So uh, we try to, uh, to see that the government doesn't have money anymore. Can we get it from the rich? people, and uh, they're actually picking it up in the Netherlands. I'm also the co-founder of a group uh, of people in Rotterdam uh, following very critically how local farming in and outside the sitting is being uh, uh, done, Eat by Rotterdam, Edible Rotterdam. Uh, we established a think tank, I, I was a, a member of the think tank, this is a, a civil servant thing and quite recently we also have a food council in Rotterdam and I'm one of the uh, founding members of it and next week we will have our second meeting, so uh, we'll see what uh, comes out of that. Uh, so I'm an action researcher, you could call it. I try to test reality by trying to change it and then get the stories back why they don't want to change or why they want to change. So this is the situation in the Netherlands of course. I, I put the translations in. Uh, if as a consumer you wanted to buy something from the farmer, he would say, no, I produce for the world market, go to the supermarket. <laughs> Export-oriented agriculture. You can also see it in the landscape. We have like these. These are the nature reserves in the Netherlands, and then these are the agro-production zones. They're quite far away from the city. It's really export-oriented. We try to cluster it and to uh, establish a position in the world market. This is how uh, the, the, the Netherlands is thinking about agriculture. I'll skip this one. Uh, now, of course, there are lots of problems. Uh, here I also quote the professor that I work for, uh, Han Wiskerke, about this system, this export-oriented system. Farmers don't get a lot of income, environmental pollution, lo loss of quality and diversity because you only select uh, varieties that can uh, extend. Consumer uncertainty, we've been talking about public health problems. So there are two ways to solve this. Maybe there are three ways uh, if we uh, hear Professor Lang about it. But anyway, the, uh, these are the two ways. And I'm not going into this, but I just want to say that um, uh, what we see in the Netherlands is a hybridization. This is really what I want to talk about with you. That, uh, uh, that, uh, and, and the reason why this is important, this is a, a picture that I took when I, um, uh, I went to a conference on local food systems and then I went back to Rotterdam and I saw this is a local uh, vineyard producing food and this is the big system. And of course, if these two vans are on the road, we have more traffic problems rather than less. So they should cooperate with each other. The, the local uh, uh, grapes should probably be in here, or I don't know. This is the, the, the story of my presentation. Uh, this is the, the main message that I want to get. I also come up with this, and I think what's happening, there are pressures from existing part, uh, parties uh, and, and uh, bottom-up initiatives, but uh, in my uh, view, and I keep telling this to the rural sociologists, within the established uh, uh, um, trade community in the Netherlands, there is a real genuine interest in local food systems because they also see the problems in the, in the, in the export-oriented system that we have. So I actually work with a lot of existing players that uh, first got in their supply from Africa. They, they see the Chinese, as they say, pulling at our beans. <laughs> So they are really rethinking what's going on in the world and how have, do we have to respond to this. And therefore, all this, the, most of the examples I show are actually hybrids. So, but I'll go through them all now, starting with farmers markets in the Netherlands, particularly in Rotterdam. We don't call it a market, but a festival, because the traditional market, open air market, doesn't want a new market in the city. So it's a cultural festival. It's, it was every year, now it's about every fortnight. So it's could say it's a market, children, cultural activities, 
stuff like that going on. Then there's another special thing in the Netherlands I want to mention. Uh, we, don't, we not only have problems in the food system, but also we have a real estate crisis. So local food in the Netherlands is actually su such a hype because of the real estate crisis. Empty buildings, they start farmers, pop up farmers market in it uh, to redevelop uh, the, 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 the district in the city. And also I will give a uh, an example later. The farmland around the city has been bought by uh, developers uh, we're not going to develop it, there's a crisis in the Netherlands, they want to hand back it to the farmers and they say, okay, please do something with local food, because we've heard that it gives you a better uh, margin, so we really want, they, they want to invite farmers back. I'm not talking about small, small scale, I'm talking about hundreds of hectares of land that's being handed back to farmers in the Netherlands. Local food systems get a big impulse from that. So this is one this is the web shop that I, uh, this is a couple of web shops. This one is actually from regular farmers. These are export oriented greenhouse growers who started their own web shop and uh, it failed. This is one that is still existing. It's the national newspaper who put out a flexitarier box. This is to uh, uh, stimulate people not to eat too much meat. So uh, they gave this, uh, they give this a box scheme it's a web shop nationally supported by the, uh, a newspaper in the Netherlands. So only this advertisement is already like uh, 100,000 euros if you would have to buy it as a farmer, but they, they work with the national newspaper. This is another web shop in Amsterdam. I'm just pointing out this one because they found a new niche market. This is small scale enterprises that usually would have lunches together they, the secretary or whatever, the, uh, some staff would go to the supermarket, buy the food, they would share it together, but it's actually a very good market for uh, uh, web shops because it's uh, generally more, the, the lot size is bigger than with, uh, uh, with families. So it's a new market, it's doing very well. This is another uh, uh, re um, outlet. This is a, a new supermarket chain and it's presented as a farm, farmer's market. It's called Markt. It, it started in Amsterdam. It now has nine or ten locations throughout the western part of the country. <laughs> Real food. Now this is um, uh, this is the story. I'm, I'm trying to explain to you the dynamics because the, the established players and the small scale ones they are in the, in, competing in the same economy. So this is a, a cooperative of farmers north of Amsterdam. They were uh, delivering to that particular market supermarket I uh, presented to you, they said we don't like to deal with cooperatives, so uh, they, they started a limited company, it's called My, Mein Boer, My Farmer. Uh, so first it was a cooperative, then it was a limited company, and now it is uh, bought by a big player, Smeding, uh, which is now uh, still delivering to the market supermarket, but also to a couple of other supermarkets. And then you get this type of story, what is the label saying? It was, in the, it was on the internet last week. Uh, here it says that the produce is coming from a particular farmer in the Netherlands, and here it says that it's imported from Israel. <laughs> so what was the story? <laughs> uh, the story is, of course, that it's repacked. It is important. At the moment, there's no uh, fresh potatoes anymore, so we're out of stock. If you want to mainstream local food, then when it's out of stock, you have to buy it in Israel. And, this, uh, is, and then the EU regulations requires that the repacking should be on the label, and the repacking is done by the farmer who is in season uh, supplying it. So this is the explanation of the director on, on the internet, this story. This is what you get. When you mix up mainstream with local food, you get a lot of stories to explain. This is another one, it's a farmer's market, and I wonder if this would fit in the, this is a covered farmer's market, it's actually a retail uh, formula, but uh, uh, it would probably fit in the local food ones because uh, uh, as it is structured, the farmer owns the produce till it reaches the, 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 the cashier, and then it transfers to the consumer. But actually, it feels like a, re a supermarket, but uh, it would fit in the local produce because uh, uh, they tried to, to, uh, to, to take out several intermediate steps. This is another one, it's in the support project, it's uh, Willem and Drees. They look in regular supermarkets with a local food shelf. 
So this is in a regular supermarket, but it's local food, 40 kilometers. This is how they do, they're doing. In their core area, they are profitable now. In the core area where they started, they are profitable now. Profitable now. They try to use the regular supermarket system to, to bring in local food. Uh, this is, as I said, uh, uh, real estate redevelopment. This is, uh, I'm now talking about restaurants, how restaurants in the Netherlands go about with local food. This is a restaurant that I'm involved in. It's an urban farm. It's real estate redevelopment. This is how the artist impression was. And this is what is really now there, if you would go there. Uh, so pretty much realized as it was uh, in the minds of the people. And uh, this is the restaurant. And here is the local food shop. In uh, Rotterdam, um, uh, since uh, we have this edible Rotterdam, we try to make sure that we bridge with farmers around Rotterdam. So we're not pushing them out by producing stuff inside the city. We try to be friends and we exchange products. And this was our inspiration. It's another uh, 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 real estate redevelopment in Dordrecht, close to Rotterdam. It's an old water tower and a man uh, who he had a lot of money, he's an informal investor, I would say, and he uh, re recreated a Victorian market garden. And you can get your food right from the garden when you eat in the restaurant. So these are restaurant concepts using local food as a characteristic. This is another one, a pop-up restaurant. Again, the real estate crisis plays a role. Uh, and they source from community gardens in the particular district of the city. Uh, so. These are the community gardens that they source from, and it's also a social enterprise. So he's the uh, initiator, and he's, he's cooking with kids and with youngsters. And uh, some of these uh, youngsters, like this guy there, over there, uh, he was a drug addict, but now he's the chef of two locations. So pre doing pretty well. Uh, now this is, we're moving now to out of home. So we move to regular wholesalers, and this is actually the wholesaler that told me that uh, he wanted to rethink his sourcing strategy. He bought beans in Africa, but not anymore. He's trying to source them locally. It's a regular guy. He's not an alternative food person. He doesn't know anything what, I, what I'm talking about when I talk about my research, but I cooperate with him. Uh, he's trying to, do, to reintroduce this uh, uh, old uh, cow, old traditional variety of cow uh, uh, in the Netherlands, because they can um, uh, walk on swampy grounds and eat the, the, the raw, the, the very bad quality of uh, grass. So it keeps our landscape nice. It's like uh, the peat meadows, the peat meadows. So and he's trying to, uh, to build a chain with this, uh, with this meat. And it's actually very nice because a lot of the meat is going into uh, fast food. So if you go to some fast food places in the Netherlands, all the meat is locally sourced. That's quite nice. Uh, I'm not going to. This is a. This is a, another uh, example. Is Daily XL? I don't know if Daily XL is also in Britain, but it's a, it's a, also a wholesaler, and they set up this platform for farmers. I have five minutes, but I'm about to finish. So, it's a, a platform of farmers. Here, it's from your own region, 24/7. You can order, and the computer system only allows you to order from a particular farm if it is the distance that you want it to be as a farmer. So some of the farmers, they are multifunctional farmers, they also have their own restaurant or they have a tea, tea drinking facility. So they say, okay, only restaurants that are probably like 40 kilometers away, so it's on a cycling distance, they can order. So it's uh, using uh, the uh, mainstream technology, mainstream logistical services to recreate local platforms where consumers and farmers can meet. It's actually well done. And it is, when I talk about the investment perspective, this is a stock rated company at the South, in South Africa. So they took this from uh, their enterprise in New Zealand and they tried to recreate this now and roll it out throughout the world probably. So it's quite interesting to follow it. This is another one. It's also uh, 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 listed at the, the stock market. It's Laplace. It's a, a road restaurants. They try to source all their food fresh, so they abandoned, it's, they have kitchens there, uh, so I call it also, I call it slow food fa uh, served fast. They copied the McDonald's system, but not in terms of uh, freshness and local produ produce, so all the recipes can be 
uh, cooked by students on the premises uh, in seven steps. It's, it's, uh, and uh, what they did is, it's not only fresh, but it's also locally produced. And also on top of it now, they're uh, going to uh, put uh, vegetable <coughs> farms on the rooftop. So it's urban farming as well. They're going to do that. Uh, this is one of the farms that they source from. It's close to Amsterdam. Uh, it was an abandoned greenhouse uh, location. It's now a social farm. And uh, that company, Laplace, has invested, has given half of the investment to set up this uh, social farm. So, uh, and they source now to, this, uh, to these uh, road restaurants. Now is probably my last example. This, another, this is close to Schiphol. I thought, you know, we have a real estate crisis in the Netherlands, but Schiphol, Amsterdam, is the only place where uh, the economy is still expanding. It's not the case. Uh, these are uh, uh, new logistical uh, parks uh, bought from farmers, but uh, they will not be developed. So I was in a consultancy project uh, that uh, uh, Schiphol Airport Development Corporation wanted to hand it over back to the farms uh, and uh, take the loss. And uh, one farmer, provisionally already, was uh, putting, but these are, you know, like uh, business parks with a lot of land not yet being uh, developed. So one farmer uh, got the contract for one year to grow food on it. So he grows, um, uh, among other things, mustard seed. The mustard seed is being put into mustard and it's sold at this Laplace restaurant. So it's again a local food chain. It is interrelated to big money uh, and it's also being, um, being um, um, presented to consumers in um, franchise, uh, franchise uh, restaurants. And on top of that, what they do, they take out all the uh, ground coffee and they recycle it, they grow uh, mushrooms in it, and the mushrooms are being uh, brought back into the restaurants. So they also do a lot about recycling, reverse logistics. They take out the, the citrus uh, from the citrus uh, press, and they make uh, organic uh, uh, washing, uh, liquid, I don't know, washing liquid from it. So uh, they, they take up the recycling as well. Quite nice. That's, oh yeah, this is my very last one. <laughs> this is uh, when I was at Schiphol Airport yesterday, spending the whole day. Uh, I knew that some of the farmers, uh, some of the farmers I knew, told me that they had been asked by the uh, the caterer of Schiphol to supply local food, like 60,000 kilograms of peeled potatoes, and they were asking me, okay, how can we do it? Because there is a harvest market in Schiphol, so I had to spend the whole day there. So I was. Walking around the place, and I found this is the market hall in Schiphol. It's fresh and local. To me, it looks artificially authentic, but I actually know that farmers from the area there that are sitting on the land that has been bought by Schiphol but given back, are, they are supplying this particular location. So I'm pretty impressed. Uh, it looks like a very artificially uh, authentic uh, Local, it looks like it, if they are, you know, like uh, uh, jumping on the bandwagon of local food movement, but it is actually local. So thank you for your attention.